In a world where truths are often black or white, and judgments are passed in the blink of an eye, I bring to you a story that challenges the very core of our beliefs and promises a tale of transformation that might just change how we see ourselves and the world around us. Our story unfolds in a time and place rich in tradition and ritual, in the bustling city of Jerusalem during the Feast of Tabernacles. This celebration, marking the end of the harvest season, filled the city with joy, gratitude, and a sense of communal unity. It was amidst this backdrop that Jesus found himself, not just as a participant but as a beacon of wisdom, teaching and engaging in profound dialogues with those who gathered around him. The temple in Jerusalem, a place of immense significance, became the stage for our tale. Here, Jesus taught, his understanding of the scriptures leaving an indelible mark on all who listened. His words, laden with depth and insight, echoed off the ancient stone walls, captivating the minds and hearts of his audience. However, the serenity of this scene was abruptly shattered when a group of religious leaders burst onto the scene, dragging along with them a woman caught in the act of adultery. The air thickened with tension and anticipation as the crowd realized the gravity of the situation. The law was clear and unforgiving regarding such transgressions. Yet, there was a glaring omission in this scene of judgment the man involved in the act was nowhere to be seen, raising whispers of injustice and partiality among the onlookers. The accusers, confident in their moral high ground, presented the woman to Jesus, expecting him to echo the harsh judgment dictated by the law. Yet, what unfolded next was a testament to the unpredictable nature of wisdom and compassion. Jesus, rather than condemning, paused, a silence that seemed to weigh heavily on everyone present. Then, with a simplicity that belied the depth of its impact, he invited anyone without sin to cast the first stone. One by one, the accusers, confronted with the mirror to their own imperfections, departed, leaving behind a powerful lesson in humility and the transformative power of mercy. As the crowd dissolved, a new understanding took root. The woman, once a symbol of sin and shame, stood as a testament to the potential for change and redemption. Jesus, through this act of unexpected mercy, not only challenged the societal norms but also illuminated a path of compassion and understanding for us to follow. In the heart of ancient Jerusalem, under the blazing sun, a story of compassion and wisdom unfolds, capturing the essence of justice and mercy. This tale, dear viewers, brings to life an incident that has echoed through time, revealing the depth of human character and divine insight. Our story centers around a woman caught in the act of adultery, an offense punishable by death according to the laws of Moses. The stage is set in a bustling marketplace, where voices of condemnation rise like a tempest, ready to cast stones at the accused. The accusers, a group of stern-faced religious leaders, present the woman before Jesus, challenging him to pass judgment. They cite the law of Moses, which commands that such individuals be stoned, placing Jesus in a precarious position. Their intentions, however, are far from seeking justice. They aim to trap Jesus in a dilemma, hoping to discredit him. If he orders the stoning, he would appear merciless, if he pardons the woman, he would seem to undermine the law of Moses. This scenario mirrors another challenge posed to Jesus regarding paying taxes to Caesar, both designed as traps to ensnare him. The Law of Moses, specifically Deuteronomy 22 verse 22, indeed prescribes the death penalty for adultery, serving as a foundation for social stability through clear legal boundaries. Yet, the essence of the law transcends mere punishment, it seeks to correct and unite the community, reflecting the heart of God, a balance between justice and mercy. However, the religious leaders, in their rigid adherence to the letter of the law, fail to grasp its true spirit, lacking compassion and the desire for restoration. In this tense moment, Jesus' response is unexpected and profound. 
he stoops down and begins to write on the ground, showing disinterest in the accuser's manipulation and shifting the focus onto himself. This act of writing in the dirt, while not directly confronting the accusers, speaks volumes. It demonstrates his refusal to be drawn into their scheming and redirects the narrative toward a deeper truth. The manipulation of the adulterous woman by the religious leaders is evident. She is used as a pawn in their game to trap Jesus, conspicuously omitting the presence of the guilty man, who is possibly one of their own. This selective justice highlights their ulterior motives, driven by political and religious agendas rather than a genuine commitment to the law. As the story unfolds, the lack of true justice from the accusers becomes increasingly apparent. Their claim of catching the woman in the very act of adultery raises questions about their own integrity and the fairness of their judgment. It is clear that their actions are not motivated by a desire to uphold the law but by a desperate attempt to challenge Jesus' authority and teachings. In the midst of our story, we find ourselves transported back to a time where the air buzzed with the tension of a moral quandary that would echo through the ages. At the heart of our narrative is Jesus, a figure renowned for his wisdom and compassion, who finds himself embroiled in a confrontation that would challenge the very essence of justice and mercy. The sun beats down on a dusty square, where a crowd, fueled by indignation, drags a woman accused of adultery before Jesus. The air is thick with anticipation, as eyes dart between the accused and the calm figure of Jesus. Instead of a swift verbal response, Jesus bends down, his finger tracing words in the dust. This act, simple yet profound, ushers a silence across the onlookers, their breaths held in suspense. Jesus's reaction, devoid of anger towards both the situation and the woman, speaks volumes without a word being uttered. The act of writing on the ground has since spurred endless interpretations and scholarly debates. Some speculate that Jesus was inscribing passages from the law condemning adultery or perhaps listing the sins of the accusers themselves. Others theorize that he was biding his time or following a Roman courtroom practice of writing the verdict before vocalizing it. The Greek word used four right hints at the recording of the accuser's sins, adding layers to this enigmatic scene. As Jesus writes, he seems to deliberately ignore the accusations hurled at the woman, possibly signaling his disdain for the accuser's malice. This moment of reflection culminates when Jesus stands, his gaze sweeping over the crowd, and delivers a statement that would resonate through time. Let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. With these words, Jesus doesn't just absolve the woman but challenges every onlooker to introspect, to recognize the common pitfall of judging others hastily while ignoring one's own faults. He advocates for a justice that is not only fair but tempered with mercy, a lesson that transcends the specifics of the situation to touch on a universal truth about human nature and the complexity of morality. As the crowd disperses, leaving the woman unharmed, the dust settles back onto the ground, carrying with it the weight of Jesus' words. This pivotal moment not only showcases his wisdom and compassion but also his revolutionary approach to justice, one that prioritizes understanding and forgiveness over condemnation and retribution. In the heart of our tale, we journey through time to meet two pivotal figures whose actions and teachings continue to echo through the ages, shaping our understanding of forgiveness, judgment, and compassion. This part of our story, dear viewers, unfolds with the wise King David and the compassionate Jesus Christ at its core, inviting us to reflect on the profound lessons they offer. Our narrative resumes with King David, a man whose valor and piety crowned him as one of the most revered monarchs in history. Yet, even he was not immune to faltering. The prophet Nathan, serving as a mirror to David's conscience, recounts a parable of a man who, lost in his desires, committed theft and murder. This story, though centuries old, 
illuminates the timeless truth about recognizing our own missteps before casting judgment upon others. The tale then delves deeper, emphasizing the role of confrontation and reconciliation within the family of God. It's a delicate dance of truth and grace, where humility paves the way. As members of this spiritual kinship, we are reminded that addressing the wrongs of our brothers and sisters is not about wielding the sword of judgment but extending the olive branch of understanding, acknowledging that we, too, stand in need of forgiveness. Transitioning from the Old Testament to the New, we find Jesus in a tense confrontation. A woman, accused and exposed, stands before a crowd thirsty for retribution. Yet, in this climactic moment, Jesus embodies the serenity of justice. He does not engage the accusers with harsh rebuke or stoke the flames of their anger. Instead, he diffuses the situation with a wisdom that shields the woman's dignity and safety, showcasing a revolutionary approach to dealing with public shame and accusation. In a society where shame often lingered like a shadow, Jesus introduced a radical concept, Shame serves a purpose only if it leads to transformation, not as a perpetual burden. His compassionate stance not only quells the immediate thirst for punishment but also prompts a profound introspection among the accusers. One by one, they retreat, faced with the mirror of their own imperfections. The culmination of this episode is both tender and transformative. Jesus, with kindness and forgiveness, addresses the woman. There is no condemnation in his words, only the offering of a new beginning. This moment, where Jesus and the woman are left alone, is a powerful depiction of divine mercy in action. As the author of this tale, I invite you, the viewers, to ponder these narratives. In the actions of David and Jesus, we are called to reflect on our own lives. How do we confront wrongdoing, in ourselves and others? Do we lead with judgment, or do we extend grace? The lessons from these ancient stories resonate with timeless relevance, challenging us to embody compassion and understanding in our own lives. And so, as Jesus walked through the bustling streets, he stumbled upon a scene that would forever etch itself into the annals of history. A woman, shrouded in the shadow of shame, stood before a throng of accusers, their eyes blazing with righteous indignation, stones clenched tightly in their hands, ready to cast judgment upon her. But Jesus, with compassion flooding his gaze, intervened in this cruel spectacle. With a voice that carried the weight of ages, he asked where her accusers had vanished. And in a voice barely above a whisper, the woman confessed that none remained to condemn her. In that moment, Jesus, the epitome of mercy, declared that he too would not cast the stone of condemnation upon her. Go, he commanded, and sin no more. Imagine the flood of emotions that must have coursed through her veins at those words, a love and acceptance so profound, it defied comprehension. For in that instant, she experienced a grace so profound, it shattered the shackles of judgment that bound her. And yet, in this act of forgiveness, Jesus did more than merely spare her from the wrath of the crowd. He assumed her guilt, taking upon himself the burden of her sins, despite being the only one among them without fault. In finding refuge in the connection with Jesus, she found deliverance from the hasty judgment of the crowd. And though Jesus acknowledged her sin, he also offered her hope, hope for a new beginning, a chance to rewrite the narrative of her life. For the woman, this hope was a lifeline, a beacon in the darkness, for the consequences of her actions could have been dire indeed. Excommunication from her community, rejection by her husband, these were the potential outcomes she faced. Yet, in this moment of divine intervention, she found not only forgiveness but also the promise of redemption. Her story, a testament to the kindness and forgiveness of Jesus, underscores the transformative power of empathy and compassion in the human heart. It serves as a poignant reminder that no one is beyond the reach of salvation and that the mercy of God can indeed change lives.
Just as it did for Mary Magdalene and countless others throughout the ages, sinners redeemed by the boundless grace of a loving God. In the bustling streets of Jerusalem, amid the dust and the clamor, there existed tales that stirred the souls of those who dared to listen. And among these stories, there was one that shimmered like a jewel in the sun, a tale of love, redemption, and the boundless mercy of a higher power. Picture this, Juana, the wife of Herod's administrator, and numerous others, tormented by demons, their hearts heavy with burdens. But then, like a gentle breeze through a parched land, the love of Christ touched them, soothing their anguish, healing their wounds, and granting them solace. Transformed by this divine encounter, they embarked on a sacred mission, dedicating their lives to spreading the message of God's kingdom. They understood then, as we do now, that the divine seeks not to condemn but to uplift, to offer redemption instead of punishment. Consider the broken jar, shattered and scattered. Yet, through the hands of the divine, it is pieced back together, restored to wholeness. Such is the essence of redemption, exemplified in the story of the woman forgiven by Jesus. Ah, but it does not end there. For Jesus, in his infinite wisdom and compassion, does not merely save the adulterous woman from the clutches of condemnation. No, he offers her something far greater, a chance for a new beginning, a path to mend the fabric of her troubled life. And so, the message resounds across the ages, no matter the depth of one's transgressions, a brighter future awaits. Even the saints, who once stumbled in darkness, were illuminated by the mercy of God. In exploring these tales of transformation, we uncover the profound implications of divine mercy for all humanity. Jesus, the bridge between justice and kindness, upholds the law but challenges us to examine our own hearts before casting stones. Indeed, the story of the adulterous woman reminds us of the paramount importance of mercy over mere justice. It is mercy that transforms, guiding us toward love, righteousness, and ultimately, redemption. For as it is written in Romans 3 verse 23, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. None are exempt from imperfection, yet all are worthy of grace and forgiveness. Thus, the story of the adulterous woman transcends mere narrative. It is a revelation of the divine character, a testament to the radical inclusivity of God's love, and a challenge to societal norms. And so, as the accusers fade into the shadows, leaving the woman alone with Jesus, we witness the ultimate act of compassion. For though he alone is qualified to judge, he chooses not condemnation but mercy. In this, we find hope. In this, we find redemption. And in this, we find the enduring power of love to transform even the most broken among us. In the enchanting tapestry of life, there are threads woven with the fabric of second chances, threads spun from the boundless mercy of the divine. It is a tale of transformation, where the brush strokes of grace paint over the flaws of our existence, breathing new life into the worn canvas of our souls. As the author of our own stories, we often find ourselves stumbling through the chapters, seeking redemption in the pages of tomorrow. Yet, it is not through our own merits that salvation finds us, but through the unyielding mercy of a benevolent Creator, as Second Tito graciously reminds us. In a world quick to judge and condemn, it is the tender hand of God that extends the olive branch of mercy, offering solace to the weary and redemption to the lost. But oh, how challenging it can be to both accept and extend such boundless compassion. For in the depths of our humanity lies the struggle to forgive where forgiveness seems impossible and to show kindness where it is least expected. And yet, it is within the embrace of divine mercy that true transformation is found. Daily, we are faced with choices, choices to walk the path of mercy, to forgive the unforgivable, and to love unconditionally. It is in passages like Micaiah's 6 8, Ephesians 2, and Tiago 2 that we find the roadmap to living out this call to mercy. 
to be a disciple is to embrace the transformative power of mercy, to witness firsthand the miracles wrought by the mercy of Christ. Take, for instance, the stories of Zaku and Maria Madalena, two souls redeemed and transformed through the boundless compassion of their Savior. And so, our own journey of transformation begins with a humble heart and a willingness to embrace the mercy of Christ. We are not defined by our flaws or imperfections, but by our readiness to accept the outstretched hand of grace. In the shadow of our burdens, we find release, for in Christ, we are made anew. As disciples of the one who bore our sins, we cast aside the weight of our past and step boldly into the dawn of a new beginning. Let us, then, bow our heads in gratitude for the mercy that knows no bounds and accept Jesus as the guiding light of our lives. For in the embrace of divine mercy, we find not only redemption but also the courage to begin again. The mercy of God is about transformation, not just second chances. According to Titus 3 verse 5, we are saved not by our own deeds, but by the mercy of God. In a world ready to condemn, God offers mercy. Challenges arise in accepting and extending this mercy. We find our true transformation in the embrace of God's mercy. Daily, we must choose mercy, forgive where it is difficult, and show kindness where it is unexpected. We must love unconditionally. Encouragement to delve into passages such as Micah 6 verse 8, Ephesians 2, and James 2. Being a disciple means embracing the mercy that transforms lives. Examples of transformation through Christ's mercy, Zacchaeus and Mary Magdalene. Our own transformation process begins with humility and embracing Christ's mercy. We are not defined by perfection but by the willingness to embrace Christ's mercy. We can leave behind our burdens and start anew as disciples of Christ. A prayer of gratitude for God's mercy and acceptance of Jesus as Lord. And that was the end of our video. I hope you have gained more knowledge about God from this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It will help us spread the word of God even further. If you want to delve deeper into this knowledge, I recommend clicking on one of the videos that is appearing now for you. See you later.